the leaders of the G7 have chosen to come down to Cornwall. I think they've chosen Cornwall so that when they're not talking, they can go on a nice little holiday by the beach and say, yeah, this is really pretty, and then polluting it all and ruining the planet. These are the countries that are some of the most historically responsible for emissions. People are already on the front lines and experiencing the impacts today. And those countries aren't here, and a lot of the times they're not given the space at the table. We need space for climate reparations. We need space for global equity. In the UK, it's easy to forget that there's a climate crisis. But elsewhere in the world, there are typhoons on their doorstep. There are floods. There are fires. This is not something they can just forget about or put off. Say hey! 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 where the COP will be. I think the fact that it's called COP26 says enough about their priorities. The fact that this has been going on for 10 years longer than I've been alive. In the UK, we have not reduced our emissions as much as we say we have. They claim that around 45% of our emissions have been reduced since 1999, but that's because of creative accounting. It doesn't include things like aviation, exports and imports, shipping. Do the change I've seen from all governments? Nothing! Nothing! Not a thing! They have declared a climate emergency, but that is empty words. In the Highland Council, we've declared a climate emergency, and yet we're building spaceports in Scotland. Yet we're continuing HS2, deep sea mining, bee killing pesticides, destroying woodlands. The people over in St. Ives at the G7 are not taking the climate crisis seriously. The media are not reporting on it as it is happening. You praise Boris Johnson for these new climate policies, yet he flies across the country to a climate summit. Can you not see the hypocrisy? In that building is people from the media. Most of them go to private schools, so don't trust them, don't give interviews to the Daily Mail, fuck Dupin Murdoch. Let's change everything. It's rubbish found on the beaches around Cornwall, so that we can link everything up this weekend. We've got stencils that we'll add to it gradually. Stencils about inequality in Cornwall, pro-Palestine stencils, stencils about climate justice. We are from the Campaign Against Climate Change trade union group. We've been campaigning for one million climate jobs over the last 10 years because enough of those myths that say that acting on climate will destroy jobs. We can actually create thousands and thousands of jobs for people who are now unemployed because of the COVID crisis. Job in renewable energy, jobs in public transport, in housing to tackle the housing crisis that affects so many young people. There are millions of us in the trade union movement who support you and look up to you. The G7 represents the horror of capitalism that is destroying this planet. The fact that there's still this many people who show up to these after a pandemic is the only thing that kind of gives me hope for my future. Because if this many people have shown up after so long with nothing, then imagine what we can do in the future. I was meant to be sitting a chemistry exam. That exam was just, it was so important to me and I really wanted to be there today, but I had to come here because this movement, it needs people like us sacrificing our daily lives to come here. It's us that can make this change. It's not them. It has to come from us. We have to demand it together, united. They say that they're listening to us. But we need more and we need real promises now. We are going to keep fighting. No matter how many times a week we are out here, we are getting to them. And they are going to listen to us. They have to prioritize people over 